Thank you. What is the basis of India's uh, constitutional democracy? Unlike Western uh, democracy, India's democracy is not a liberal democracy in the traditional academic sense of word. Liberal democracies are based on the idea of individual rights and negative liberties. India's constitution has been rightly called a militant constitution by none other than by, by Gary Jacobson which means that the Constitution outlines a path to social revolution as said by Granville Austin. So the brief point that must be made is that the Constitution of India recognizes the stratification of India and the consequent structural discrimination which marginalized communities face in their day-to-day lives. So therefore, it is important to note that the Constitution of India espouses an emancipatory politics. It is in the spirit of this emancipatory politics that the Constitution of India guaranteed universal adult franchise and the right to fully participate in the electoral politics. And in this sense, the Constitution of India was focused on providing marginalized com uh, com communities to mobilize themselves politically, seek representation to ensure social, economic, political justice takes place. Now, before elaborating on my substantive point in opposing the motion, it is very important that I, at the outset, uh, tell you the distinction between the Western liberal democracies and the unique uh, position of Indian democracy. The key difference is that Western democracies think of a universal citizen, whereas in India, our democracy recognizes India's citizen having diverse experience and who has faced different kind of discrimination. Our democracy recog doesn't recognize universal citizen and the individual is shaped by his or her experiences. For example, the fear of being lynched by a mob, fear of sexual violence, uh, uh, fear of uh, being prosecuted for my eating habits. So therefore, my opposition to the motion is based on this broader principle of constitutional emancipation. Now, there are three substantive arguments which I will make against this motion. First, the Supreme Court judgment does not distinguish between appeals on the basis of identity and sectarian appeals on the basis of identity. Second is the judgment prevents electoral mobilization of marginalized communities while strengthening the position of privilege and established political groupings. Third, remember the Constitution explicitly recognizes linguistic, caste, religion, and race, regional identities, which are essential to an Indian life. And how can a law prohibit this recognition in electoral fray in the first place? Now, let me give an example of, of when I say uh, an appeal being made on identity. If I stand up and say, that you vote for me, and I will ensure that Muslims are adequately represented in parliament. If I, tell, if I make an appeal identity to Dalits, that you vote for me, we'll have, correcting, uh, we'll have correct policy decisions which will, uh, which will bring down discrimination. If I make an appeal to the backward classes and say, vote for me, on the basis of legislating safeguards for the protection of Dalits, Muslims, and backward class, does that mean corrupt practices? No. Now, if appeals are made on sectarian approach, like incitement to violence, destruction of property, or the promise of setting up anti-Romeo squads, or the promise of banning particular food, this is what is the problem over here. Now, these are appeals which are made on, these are sectarian appeals, which definitely fall under corrupt practices. Now, let me give you two examples of an appeal made on identity and an appeal made on sectarian appeal. For example, we had a former Indian Prime Minister who was, a, who was conferred Bharat Ratna. I have a video of his wherein he says in 1990s that he demanded that Muslim citizens leave the country. And the words he used was, Babar ki santan chodo Hindustan. Now, this is hate speech aimed at inciting ill will and hatreds against fellow citizens. 
Now, if you support this motion, and if Ambedkar was alive today, and Ambedkar would have said that what Ambedkar wrote at that time, he had written now, that governing class in India consists principality of Brahmins, corrupt practice. If Ambedkar would have said, he advised his fellow Dalits, if you are to share political power, you must be organized as one solid unit before you, can, you could successfully fight for your due rights in the future government of this country. Again, it will be corrupt practice. Now, Ambedkar also said, he said, I came into this constant assembly with no great aspiration than to safeguard the interests of scheduled caste. That is why I oppose this motion. Now, look at this, you know, in, Indian democracy is not an abstraction, which the Supreme Court completely failed to recognize the distinct identifiable rights of all the Indians, you know, which the Constitution of India guarantees to us. The Constitution guarantees protection to religious linguistic minorities. The Constitution provides reservations to Dalits and Adivasis and OBCs. Now, when the Constitution of India can recognize these distinct identities and experience of people, why can't the court account for it in determining what kind of appeals for, for, for votes constitute a corrupt practice? The court didn't do that. Now, democracy cannot operate in abstraction. Therefore, it is not possible for us to think of elections as, I, I, you know, think of electors as persons outside of the lived experiences. So it is absurd to expect an individual who suffers in communal rights to vote for a person who does not recognize his, his, uh, uh, his suffering or does not promise justice and, and rehabilitation. Now, if you support this motion, you are prohibiting appeals on the basis of identity politic, identification. That will be a death blow to the marginalized groups from organizing politically since the primary plank of marginalized communities and powerless community is fighting injustice and institutional discrimination. If you support this motion, it will allow the agenda of majority in politics and this dog whistle politics will continue forever. And the last point which I would like to make is that, let me give an example. We had heard a leader of a political party, in fact, let me be open and say the prime minister of this country say, Shamshan in Khabrastan, without even giving the correct data, but he got away with it. Now, if I stand up and say that Muslims are not there in Indian parliament, there are only 23 Muslims, I am accused of divisive politics. Now, this is the distinction which you will have to remember when you vote. Now, as a concluding point, the Constitution of India clearly identifies various identities and seeks to accommodate their concerns within a broader political setup. Can seeking votes on the basis of recognized identities be equated for a corrupt practice? No. Now, let me end by telling you uh, uh, that is, there is a clear difference between Babar ki Santan and Manuwad se Azadi. What is the difference? When uh, someone says, OAC is a Babar ki Santan, that is hate speech. If I stand up and say, Manuwad se Azadi, that is part of the India's constitutional promise. Manuwad si Azadi is India's constitutional promise and that cannot fall under corrupt practices. And please remember that the Hindutva judgment is still there. Someone can stand up and say defeat Dixit and OIC for the success of Hindutva and that will not be corrupt practice. If I stand up and say vote for me for the victory of Islam, I will be disbarred. And please understand that regional aspirations in India are there. You have DMK, you have Akali Dal, you have TRS, you have Mizo National Front, you have Nagas People Front, TDP. Did that weaken the social fabric of the nation? No. It strengthened the social fabric of the nation. That is why I oppose this motion. Thank you so much.